Hello and welcome to our final video lesson on Chapter 20, DNA Replication and Repair, in which we'll be considering the subject of DNA packaging and modification. Eukaryotic DNA is highly condensed in order to fit within the nucleus. It's referred to as heterochromatin. It's densely packed and so it stains intensely. In this electron micrograph, the heterochromatin would be depicted by the red portions of the nucleus. In this case, the DNA is densely packed so no transcription is occurring. In contrast to that, we have euchromatin, which is less condensed and therefore stains less well. That would be the yellow portions of our figure here. This represents DNA that's being transcribed at a higher rate. The easiest way to remember the distinction is that heterochromatin, HC, is highly condensed. So let's see how that DNA is packaged. The fundamental packing unit is the nucleosome. There's a core complex of eight histone proteins, four pairs, and the DNA wraps around that complex of proteins a little bit more than one and a half turns per nucleosome. In our figure here at the top of the slide, on the left we have the histone proteins in the center and the DNA wraps around it. You can think of the histone complex as a spool and the DNA as the thread that wraps around the spool. On the right we have a side view. You can see the DNA double helix wraps around about one and a half times and the histone complex in the center. As we wrap the DNA around the histone complex, that generates negative supercoils. Remember, that means it's slightly underwound and that makes it easier to separate the DNA strands. However, we still have DNA bound to protein. So the question is, do we need to fully disassemble the DNA to remove it from the spool for replication and transcription? In that case, then we have to re-spool it in order to package it. We're going to return to this question a little bit later. Here we have the different levels of chromatin structure. At the bottom of the figure here we have BDNA. We wrap that one and a half times, a little bit more than one and a half times, around the, around the histone complex to form the nucleosome. These nucleosomes aggregate to form what's called the 30 nanometer fiber, which is a little bit like a solenoid, and then these fibers loop to form the packed chromosome, the structure of which is so familiar to us. Whether we have euchromatin or heterochromatin determines whether or not the DNA is being actively transcribed. So clearly there's a more packed form of the DNA, more densely packed and a less densely packed. And since our core complex is DNA wrapped around protein, then we need to adjust that interaction. In other words, if we're densely packing it, we want the DNA to bind tightly to the histone complex. If we are transcribing it or replicating it, we need to loosen that interaction. Well, how can we do that? Well, we can either modify the proteins that form this histone complex, or we can modify the DNA, and we actually do both. Let's look first at the modification of those histones. The histone pairs associate in a kind of a handshake, and that's a pair of histones is illustrated at the top of the slide here. As you can see, each, each histone contains one long helix and two short helices. The tails of these histones are flexible and charged and they extend out from the core. This is where we're going to make those modifications. We can add and remove groups to either tighten or loosen the connection of these histones with the DNA. We can add and remove acetyl groups, phosphoryl groups, or methyl groups. So this is a way of fine-tuning the chromatin structure. We can stabilize it if we want to pack it or destabilize it if we want to transcribe it. We can also modify the DNA itself. There are C residues next to G residues and these are methylated in mammals. About 80 percent of our CG sequences are modified in this way and we see a methylated cytosine residue at the top of the screen here. This would occur certainly after replication.
In this case, the methyl groups, since they're bound to the bases, project out into the major groove. This makes it harder for DNA binding proteins to bind to the DNA and recognize the sequence. These CG sequences are referred to as CPG islands. The P just has to do with the fact that it's a phosphodiester bond connecting the C and the G. Clusters of these CPG sequences are located near gene promoters. As we'll learn in Chapter 21, gene promoters are where we begin the process of transcription. These CPG sequences at these gene promoters are typically unmethylated. Remember, that makes it easier for the transcription factors to bind and begin the process of transcription at those promoters, a more ready access for transcription. So if these are methylated, it's a way to silence the DNA so that it is not transcribed. This concludes our studies in Chapter 20. Next, we'll turn our attention to that last section in Chapter 3, Section 3.4 on DNA techniques. In the next video lesson, we'll consider sequencing of DNA.